The Earth is a water planet, but global water resources are under attack. From dead zones to overfishing, rising seas to plastic pollution, our water planet is changing in ways that threaten us all. The good news is solutions exist, and Earth Echo is on a mission to find them. I'm Philippe Cousteau. Our fisheries are on the verge of collapse around the world. Join me as we explore solutions to restoring them to sustainability. On Earth Echo Expeditions, what's the catch? In order to build sustainable fisheries in the future, it's critical to identify, protect, and manage juvenile fish habitat. Outside of Plymouth, marine biologist Tom Stamp uses a remote estuary to do just that. Generally, a lot of fish will use these environments for shelter. So they're able to have a safe place to feed and to grow up a little bit bigger, and then they'll head out into the open ocean where they're targeted by fisheries. Yeah. For Tom to get a sample of which juvenile fish frequent this estuary and see what they're feeding on, he'll use the changing of the tides to his advantage. So this is what's called a fike net. As the tide is coming in, they deploy these nets, and then when the tide goes back out and the fish follow that water, they get funneled here into this tube, collected in the back, which then allow researchers to really get a picture of what's happening here. We'll walk out in the mud and see what has passed through these nets in the past 24 hours. Oh wow, lots of crabs. Lots of crabs. Oh cool. European eel. Love it. We've got some shrimp in here and an eel. Yeah. So and you said a critically endangered eel. Yeah. So it's European eel. They migrate out to the Sargasso Sea to breed. Now the Sargasso Sea is all the way off in the mid-Atlantic. Yeah. So a long, long way away. These surveys inshore provide insight into the health of a fishery offshore. Estuaries like this are vital areas that need protection as natural nurseries for juvenile fish that will eventually grow to full size and head out to deeper waters. Two miles downriver, we investigate where the estuary actually meets the ocean. Here, Dr. Ben Chotti from the University of Plymouth will look to gain similar data on how juvenile fish use these coastal habitats. Often we think of fishing and habitat conservation as being really uh, opposed to each other, but actually I think this is where fishing and habitat conservation really sit side by side. The habitats are really important for creating a sustainable fishery. Well, we've got records from fishing boats all around the world mm for hundreds of years about what we've been catching, so we understand the adult stages that we catch a lot better. But we know very little about what's going on in these shallow environments because we just don't send our fishing boats in here. Now to get a sense of the types of fish living along these coastlines, we'll conduct a similar survey to what we just did with Tom, but using a different method. This Riley push net mimics a trawl using two skis on the side and light chains that stir up the sediment. We head just past the small waves to knee-deep water where I'll walk the push net back and forth for a few minutes. Let's see what we got. Ooh, all sorts of goodies. Yeah. Well, oh, there's a lot of shrimp. Shrimp are one of the most dominant, you know, one of the main species that live on these sandy beaches. Huh. Let's look at this guy oh, first, because yeah, this is interesting. Flounder. This is a type of flatfish called a brill. They grow up to quite large sizes. Uh -huh. It's caught in beam trawls by fishing vessels. All of these species, whether or not they're commercially important, play a role in the food web. Absolutely. We'll count them, we'll measure them. We want to know how many there are, because that's going to give a good indication of how important this area is as a habitat for fish. These samples give an idea of what species are nearby, but Tom will use another tool to see how fish use these habitats. One of the methods that we're using in particular is called acoustic telemetry. We Im implant this inside the animal, oh. right? And then we make sure that they're happy and healthy, and then we release them back into the water. Wow. So it's an acoustic tag, so it's sending out an acoustic ping. An acoustic ping. ping every 90 okay. seconds, and each tag has a unique code, and then we can track that individual fish for as long as this tag will last. Okay. And these ones usually around two years. That's amazing. Yes. How many of those have you uh, put into fish? 150. So there's 150 fish out there, yep. each with a unique name. Yeah. 
Whenever a fish is within about 300 metres of this receiver, uh -huh. it logs the time and date down to millisecond when that fish was detected. So are these deployed to just stay out on buoys in the water? Yeah. And they just stay there all the time? So yeah. when a fish passes by, you pick up their signal? You know, if you catch a bass in a particular estuary, the chances are it will live in that estuary for a long time. Our open ocean fish stocks and coastal juvenile habitats are intertwined. Thanks to the efforts of researchers like Tom and Ben, we're closer to understanding how we can manage these vital areas more effectively. To learn more about ways to keep our fisheries sustainable and find out how you can take action to make a positive difference in your community, visit Earth Echo International at eartheco.org. Earth Echo Expedition is sponsored by the Northrop Grumman Foundation. Northrop Grumman is a leading global security company dedicated to increasing STEM education opportunities for students and the teachers who inspire them.